Hey, we're here to tell you about our wonderful trip to the boatyard. Everybody loves <laughs> to go to the yeah. boatyard. Isn't that your favorite thing to oh, do? Oh, it was my favorite spot. Ooh, yeah. there were some miserable moments there. I won't lie about that. Anyway, um, we're going to show you some things about it. We want to go over the list first. Um, we did this year uh, take the boat down to Savannah. We wintered it in Savannah so that we could go to the yard. I uh, went to Thunderbolt Marine. We chose them because they have obviously the ability to be able to haul the boat with uh, the beam that we have on the boat. Uh, and they had a great reputation as well. So we're going to give you a quick list of the rundown of the list that we put together before we went to the boat yard. All right, so we wanted to repair the rudder post. We wanted to repair the boots on the sail drive, underwater light replacement, pressure wash, obviously sanding, bottom paint, all those things that you do when you're out of the yard. I wanted to add saltwater wash down in the back of the boat for fishing purposes. Oh, and prop speed, prop coating is something else that we added, which is awesome. We needed to fix some LP gas system leaks. We needed to fix a uh, lock bolt on our sliding glass door. We needed to fix a cleat on the mast and we needed to fix our main sail cradle cover which was ripped and the zipper didn't work and it was too small. We needed to recover our interior cushions, uh, I should say one or two. And we also needed a new helm ice and glass side panel. Uh, on the side of the boat we had a broken window, one of the big windows on the side, so we had to replace that window. Water leaks that were coming into the um, main cabin, the master cabin, the bow repair due to an accident that we had. Fiberglass repair, we had to diagnose a little bit of stuff on the Ray Marine system as well. We also had some spreader wires hanging loose and we wanted those um, tightened up up top and uh, radar kept disconnecting, we thought maybe that was part of the problem. We also needed to replace our halyard with a Dyneema. Oh, that's another want, not a need, that was a want. Yeah. Um, we also then wanted to add a clutch to our starboard side of our helm for our pale shell. And then obviously on the bottom of the boat again, the uh, sail drives. We did some work on the sail drives. Um, we did clean up the lower units. We replaced the seals in the lower units. Uh, we did uh, replace one main seal in the sail drives as well. Um, the props were a little bit loose, correct those, and then I'll, of course replace all the zincs on the boat as well. We also added some backing plates to our main sheet yeah. connections on the deck, strengthened them up, and removed our iridium and our web watch antenna, which was worthless. Um, we also relocated our Sirius and our AIS antennas. So that's the short list. We'll give you all the details as you watch the video. So the next 20 minutes, we'll kind of go through the before and the after and some of the differences are, are really astonishing and we're super happy we had all the work done. And we're also very happy we're out of the boat yard. Yeah, I actually had to spend a week there because it wasn't getting done fast she enough. She was not fun to be with. Oh man. <laughs> so I just had to like manage it all myself. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, that's true. But you... I, it was fortunate I could and uh, it helped, although it didn't prevent any, all the problems, it prevented some of the problems, I'm sure. We'll see you in the boat yard. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
over on this side of the boat, port side of the boat, we've got um, some vibration. It happens at about 1800 RPM, gets bad there, and then it shakes out at about 2200 RPM. So we think part of it is a little bit of the rudder we talked about, but we think there is also some problem with this wheel too. The prop itself is in good shape. Um, all of that does look good on it, um, but if you look in here as you shake this, the whole thing is loose and so there's no doubt that that has a balance issue on it and that's causing probably some of the vibration that we have so this entire prop will come off inside of here there's going to be bolts and bushings in there we'll address those and see if we can't tighten that up but that shouldn't be happening it's a pretty big shape that's in there hopefully we'll get that all addressed so we'll at the same time replace the seals. There's two seals inside of this lower unit of the sail drop. Um, we'll replace those two seals, place the oil in the sail drop, and then from here all the way up forward on the prop, we um, tighten up everything in there. And we're going to replace the boots and secure them so that they are um, tight to the hull and they don't allow little animals to get in there and make their homes. So obviously we had the props all cleaned, you know, when we did the bottom job. And you remember all the barnacles, the hair that was on them. That's pretty common. But we also made the choice to put prop speed coating on them. And that does two things. One keeps them nice and smooth so that hopefully you can get more speed out of them. And it certainly retracts from the barnacles, the organisms, the grass, the hair that starts to grow on those props real fast. So you can see those things really look good. And they say that prop speed stays on for a good long time. So we're hoping we'll have good success with that. Did replace, of course, the zincs forward on the cell drive. Um, we did not replace this zinc, but there's still good zinc left on that, so I think we'll keep it. This is still slightly tacky for being left in the bag, I guess. But that looks good to me. So here's the old sail drive boots that were on the boat, and everybody has a lot of trouble with keeping these on the boat, obviously. They go on like this, but then they tend to give way uh, they peel away, they start to fall off. You can see this one obviously had places in it where it was falling off of the hull. So Thunderbolt Marine did a real special adhesive for us to put the new boots on. And as you can see, those have been well sealed up there. And the seal that's around those is really strong and solid. So we think that's going to help a lot. Um, to number one keep them on there obviously and of course anytime they're flapping around if they come off then you know that's noise and that speed reduction and everything else so you want to keep them on there as solid as you can I think those things are going to be solid and more protection up inside the sail drive area so we're going to drop the rudders there are Delrin bushings up inside of the boat, both on the bottom and on the top, and those are worn. We'll end up replacing those if you look. That's causing a lot of vibration in the boat right there alone. These bushings that you see right here are just for the thrust of the rudder going up and down, but the main bushings are what we're going to replace, so that whole rudder will be dropped. Hopefully we'll eliminate this shape that you see in the rudder here. So we had the whole bottom done, obviously, and then the rudders were pulled and uh, new bushings or bearings were made for them out of Delrin. And we had a lot of shake in this rudder before, so as you can see now, we're as solid as we can be. There's no, no shake whatsoever in there. And that was, I think, a, a lot of the problem with the vibration that we had. So we got rid of the vibration. We've also had a hard time with our underwater lights getting them to actually stay working. They keep blowing fuses, but as you can see, they're not in the best shape. And those are going to be replaced with new ones, and uh, we'll have nice 
way to see the fish underneath the boat when we're out there. So we had an enormous amount of trouble with leaking hatches, as a lot of people do. Um, before we bought the boat, it was obviously leaking before that because during the haul out, before they sold the boat, they did have this sealed all the way around on the hatch and there was a nice seal job that was done in there. Um, did matter when we bought the boat. In fact, the day we uh, went for a sea trial on it, it was leaking. We notified that of the uh, broker and they frankly really didn't care about that at the time. We came back and we actually sealed all of these hinges as well because we thought water was coming through at the hinges. Obviously, you get a lot of splash coming into it this way. But as you can see, none of that really held anyway because that 5200 can't stick to the hinges. They're too smooth anyway. Nonetheless, it didn't matter. We still had the leaks in there. So then we went actually on the inside of the hatches and we sealed all the way around on the inside hatches as well. That was a big hassle. We had to grind it up, make it hard. So the 5200 would see, sealed everything on the inside of it as well. Guess what? Still leaked. Same amount of leak. It was a big hassle. At the end of the day, we went into these hatches. There's an O-ring right here on the outside of the boat. Those were smaller O-rings that were in there. We took the hatches uh, handles apart, put larger O-rings in there, and boom, no more leaks. So we, if we'd have done that day one, we probably would have eliminated any leaks that were in the boat and still had a usable hatch. Today, these really aren't usable because they're sealed up on both the inside and the outside. My guess is the O-rings would have fixed the problem. Stephen, talk through how we actually took those latches off because we had to have one person on the outside to hold the outside latch and then one on the inside and it was it was a difficult exercise holding your digging in place, holding yourself by the window and trying to make sure that you do that when you don't have a raging current. But it, it was doable, and it, lo and behold, that was probably the majority of the problem the entire timeline. So O-rings are the key with leaky hatches. No guarantee, of course, but it is something that is probably one of the easiest things you can change out, get a fatter O-ring, make sure it still fits in there securely and doesn't uh, uh, wrinkle up at all, but try that first. Yeah, we've got a whole box full of O-rings for that. This gives you a good idea of the general boat yard. It's a good yard. They do a good job here, Thunderbolt Marina. So we're pleased, the boat's filthy, dirty. It's in shambles, as you can see. There's the window replacement going on down here. Got some glass work going on. Here's the Thunderbolt Marina. Very large paint booth. Take on some of those really big boats. Pretty cool though. Um, you know, it's not the most comfortable stay. It's not the most scenic, but uh, hey, it's gotta be done. Somebody's gotta do it. If you wanna keep them working, you gotta keep working on them. So. We got some good stuff going on here though. We're real excited about it. All right, see you guys later. projects was putting in a new window where the other one was cracked so you'll see the new window in place it's been in there a few days drying now they're going to caulk it today because it's a nice sunny day and we should be good to go in order to get to this silly window we had to take the complete eyebrow off of the boat I'll show you what that looks like on the other side but 
it was quite a project to be able to get to the window. They had to piano wire the eyebrow off of the 48 Leopard because it's glued on. So it was not easy. Here, of course, is the eyebrow on the window that is not cracked. Of course, when they took the eyebrow off, it was difficult, so now there's gel repair that needs to be done on the eyebrow before they put the eyebrow back on. Nothing's easy. Here's our new window on the inside anyway that uh, we had to put in. It was cracked kind of right in the center. Been there for two years and finally got the window in. Here's our new bead of caulk on the window. Best bead of caulk I've ever seen. That should keep us dry inside. This is a pattern that they're using to fix some of the gel coat areas where we pulled antennas out and so they need to make a pattern of the anti-skid so that it would match. More complicated than we ever thought. cockpit speakers were not working. One of them was not working, so we have to replace them both, so they're a match set. And uh, they had to drill out the hole. So here's that mess in progress. The speakers that were in there were bows, and they're huge. On the inside, you can see that black bows. It's about double the size as the um, fusions that we're putting in. We have new speakers now. The other ones got wet and uh, corroded to the point where they couldn't be fixed. So super excited. This is like the big reveal, although it's not totally done yet, but we expanded our uh, bed in the master cabin. This is an owner's hall version, so you already have more space in the hall itself for us. But my husband is super tall. He's like, I don't know, what are you, 6'2"? Yeah, about that. 6'3", and he takes up all the room. So, we expanded our bunk. What you're seeing here is the expanded version. Um, it used to have a shelf here, and we'll show you that in a different section of the video. And then it used to have a shelf over here, over here on the bottom, on the side, there was a shelf all along there, um, similar to this shelf here, but on the bottom. And so you couldn't actually, you know, roll all the way over. So we had expanded the bunk. There was one area where we could not go fully to the wall, which you'll see there's a little diagonal piece that's been slotted in there and that covers up a conduit that houses a lot of the wires that go back from the um, back of the boat to the forward of the boat. So we'll have to temp up the mattress to cover that area a little bit, but we still gained, I would say we gained about 16, 18 inches of width yeah. on our bunk. Yeah, at least that, plus the length because we cut the corners in the back of it. Yep, so if you look down where the stairs usually are and you had a V-berth in here, 
And that V-Birth, while it's, you know, cool and you can step on it, it's, you know, nine inches up. So we don't really need to step nine inches up. We can just as well just kind of inch ourselves up and then lay down that way. So we don't really need that step in the V-Birth. So now we have all that extra room for our legs at the bottom of the bunk. We won't be kicking each other in the middle of the night. So that's how it works. And this is what it's gonna mean <laughs> that I would still love to be on the boat. Looks great. Super excited. Can't wait till it's all finished. Obviously substantially larger than it was before. So that should be a very comfortable thing for the owner's version of this Leopard 48. We'll give you a final when we have a final. This is the saltwater washdown project to add saltwater washdown on the back of the boat. So when Stephen catches a fish, he can use the saltwater washdown instead of using our fresh water to do that. It's going all the way through here, out through there, and to the back of the boat. So we mounted a saltwater wash down aft so we could have it in the cockpit area, mostly for cleaning fish um, and cleaning fish blood when we do land a fish on the aft stern of the boat. There was a saltwater wash down forward for the anchor. Everybody knows about that. So you have a raw water intake that also serves both of the heads on the port side. And it, and it serves the saltwater wash down forward for the anchor. So we did a split right here um, where we tied in another piece here to go all the way aft. And it comes out on the very stern of the boat where we can simply plug in a wash down hose there, turn on the wash down pump on the main panel, and then voila, we have wash down aft in the cockpit. Hey, we got a new saltwater wash down. Been wanting that ever since we had the boat. Never was able to get it on. It was extremely difficult to route that hose. We tied it into the um, forward saltwater wash down for the anchor. And so now hopefully when we turn it on, this thing will not uh, spray the water course up forward where the anchor is and it'll just be directed back here to the back of the boat. Hey, we'll give it a shot here in a second. Try it out. Nothing. Steven, we got any water? I don't know. We, nope. We got pressure. Look at there. Nice. Pretty good. Yeah. That'll clean the deck. So I think we're going to clean off these oysters we just, Steven just got. Yeah. He I went mean, out fishing this morning, but got oysters instead. Hey, brought on the bacon, though. <laughs> Here's a new bottom paint job. Uh, if you're in boating, you've seen this many times, but looks great. They uh, cleaned out all the through holes and painted them a little bit inside. So our whole damage up front has been corrected. Looks good, nice and shiny. And here she comes. Ready to go in the water.
What are you checking? We're gonna check, make sure your seal's not gonna leak. That's good. We don't want seals leaking. No, oh, ma'am. So far, it looks good. Well, we're not down yet. We're, oh. wait, we're waiting on you. As soon as you're okay, I'll give Kevin the thumbs up, and we can go ahead and go on down. Oh. Okay. And then once we get in the water, if it's alright with you, can you go? Uh, you're zero now. Yeah. I want you to go uh, over to starboard, back over to port. All right. Back to starboard, back to port, and go back to back to where you think midships will be. All right, I'll prep the helm station. Captain's calling right now. Goodbye, Thunderbolt Marine. Captain got us out of a really tight spot on the dock with a catamaran right in front of us and a sailboat right behind us. We got out of there just fine. Thanks, Steven. We're on our way. Really glad to be on our way.